Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's July the 18th today and we're looking at Psalm 51 and 52. Now Psalm 51 I've called it a prayer for cleansing. It's the psalm that David wrote after Nathan the prophet had come unto him after he had gone in with Bathsheba. He'd gone in with another man's wife. He says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inner parts, <clears throat> and in the hidden part, Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy with and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins. Blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. <clears throat> now this is David. It's a very touching prayer. It's one that everybody as a Christian will resonate with. We all at times would come before the Lord and pray like this but you know we need to recognize that this is not a prayer for Christians this is a prayer that's unique to David at least it's unique to those in the old covenant and there's certain features of what he prays that a Christian cannot pray it would be a misunderstanding of what a Christian is to pray certain things he says <coughs> he says Verse 11, cast me not away from thy presence. Now we all know that a Christian, even when he sins, is never cast away. Never cast away. Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out, says the Lord. And um, he says, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Now, people will immediately jump and say, oh, there we are, you see. David was a Christian. He, was, he has a, a Christian, an experience that's the same as a Christian. Well, he doesn't. You see, David is in the old covenant. David is a Jew. He is the king of Israel. And he came into this relationship with God, not by conversion, he came into this relationship with God by the blood of the covenant sacrifices and by circumcision. And he has this living experience of God based upon the fact that he's in the old covenant. He's not a Christian. He's not in Christ. He didn't come into it by grace and by faith. He came into law and he came into law by the sacrifices of Sinai. He says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. What is the salvation that he has then? Well, David has the consistent salvation of God upon his physical life and upon his family and upon his ministry because he's a righteous man under the old covenant. He believes in God. But he doesn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as his saviour. He believes in God as his, as his covenant God. <clears throat> he says, restore unto me 
the joy of thy salvation take not thy holy spirit from me now this is a immediately this is a difference between the people in the old covenant david and others and the christian the christian he has the holy spirit and he has the holy spirit forever the lord jesus said to this to the disciples now just prior to pentecost he says when the holy spirit is come he will abide with you forever so the experience of a christian is that the holy spirit comes into their life at uh, conversion at the born again experience and they are saved once and for all you know there's nothing in scripture about being saved twice and there's certainly nothing in scripture about a christian losing his salvation or losing the holy spirit that's not anywhere in scripture but david could do that you see david the holy spirit came upon david when he was anointed of the lord for his kingship role he was anointed uh, by samuel he was anointed twice he was anointed initially to be the king but then he was anointed when he became king there's a difference you see between being anointed to be king and being anointed king um, and as, as he was anointed with oil so the holy spirit came upon him in this very remarkable way so that he was able to operate in the spiritual realm outside of the physical but in those days the holy spirit not only could come upon a man but the holy spirit could come off a man and the holy spirit we have examples in scripture where the holy spirit came away from a man if he sinned or if he forsook the lord his god and this is what david prays for he says do not cast me away from your presence and do not take thy holy spirit from me <clears throat> restore to me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit then this is this is my password for the day i have two passwords one here verse 13 then will i teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted <clears throat> unto thee now <clears throat> the word conversion in scripture is not used very much but it's used here and it almost always is not referring to anything to do with being a christian it's to do with the transformation the repentance of a covenant person as they return to the lord their god that's what david is saying he says when you restore me when you do not take your holy spirit from me when you uphold me when you restore the joy of my salvation then will i teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee now notice here <clears throat> david has in mind his ministry his ministry is not just to be king to administer the kingdom david's ministry is the conversion of sinners and that i may say is exactly the same as the ministry of all the prophets it was the same as the ministry of john the baptist and of christ and of the apostles in relation to their ministry to the children of israel it was the same thing it was a call upon the sinners the sinners are those who do not keep the commandments of the lord they have sinned in some way and he, his call is to the sinners that they might be converted unto the lord um, <clears throat> so he, he goes on deliver me from blood guiltiness O god thou god of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness o lord open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise for thou desirest not sacrifice else would i give it thou delight thou delightest not in burnt offerings the sacrifices of god are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. 
Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon the altar. You see, God, he's saying, this is all in the Old Covenant. You see, Christians don't offer bullocks upon an altar. So what David is saying is, what God desires more from anybody is a, a humble spirit, a contrite spirit, a broken spirit. These are the things that God will not despise. When a man is broken before his covenant God, and when he returns to the Lord his God in full repentance, this is in the, in the covenants, then he then comes to Zion. And when he comes to Zion, he's able to offer the sacrifices, the burnt offerings, and the sacrifices of the righteous. Now, as you can imagine, this is all outside of Christian experience because it is in the Old Covenant. Now, Psalm 52, it uh, has a title, it's called a Maskell, so it's a teaching psalm. This is David not only uh, creating a song, but he's creating a song that is something that can be used to teach spiritual truth. It is the psalm of David when Deog the Edomite came and told Saul and said unto him, David is come to the house of Ahimelech. Why boastest, boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endureth continually. Thy tongue devises mischiefs like a sharp razor working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good and lying rather than to speak righteousness. So this is David speaking to Deog the Edomite. Deog the Edomite was a, a wicked, wicked man. And David speaking to him, he's saying, why are you boasting in your mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endureth continually. Your tongue devises mischiefs like a razor, working deceitfully. You love evil more than good. This is the definition of a, of a wicked man. He loves evil more than good. Verse 4. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy thee for ever. He shall take thee away, pluck thee out of thy dwelling place, and root thee out of the land of the living. So the message of David to the wicked man, Deog, is this. God will pluck you out, pluck you out of your house, and pluck you out of the land of the living. You will die, and you will die quickly. Now he says, Silah, or think of that. Now, Verse 6 and 7 is another password of mine, a particular notable phrase. He says, the righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Now, in scripture, we've talked about the sinners and the righteous. In the previous psalm, we, David says, then I shall teach sinners. Let me just go back to that psalm. <clears throat> if I can find it. Um, can't find it now <laughs> there we are verse 13 then will I teach um, sinners shall be converted unto thee so there is two designations in all of the covenants in, in, in the Mosaic covenant in the Noah covenant they are either sinners or they are the righteous now David says I want to teach sinners how to be converted unto thee, how to be changed unto thee. In, in this particular psalm, he talks about the righteous. He says, the righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. You know, people say it's cruel to laugh at, uh, at the wicked. Well, in this particular case, it most certainly is not. You see, this is a wicked, wicked man. What will God do with a wicked man? He'll pluck him up. He'll pluck him out of his house. He'll pluck him out of the land of the living. And he will die. And all the righteous will see and they will fear God. And they will laugh at him. Lo, this 
is the man that made not God his strength and trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. You see, the righteous will look at this man, Diog, and they will laugh. Why? Because he doesn't trust in God. He trusts in money. He trusts in gold. And he doesn't, uh, and he doesn't seek the Lord. But, but, he says, David says, I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. And I will wait upon thy name for it is good before thy saints. So this was a psalm that was sent with, and the address on it was to the chief musician upon Mahalalath. So there we are. Fantastic psalms, aren't they? Looking forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.